Welcome back to Bernama Today. My name is Fabian and with me today, our special guest, uh, Mr. Lukman Lee. And um, Mr. Lukman is actually a social documentary photographer. Now, uh, actually, social documentary photographer, a lot of people, a lot of photographers out there these days, right? Uh, we cannot differentiate between a, a modeling photographer and advertisement photographer and a social documentary photographer. So, uh, Lukman, okay, maybe you can tell us uh, what do you actually uh, do when you talk about social documentary? Um, I think the, the term social mm. documentary is, mm. is pretty loose. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think at a fundamental level, mm -hmm. uh, it basically means just documenting people in the natural conditions. Right. Um, and so what I do is I take photographs of people. Right. And and in, in different in different different environments, but in in their natural environments. So mm -hmm. um, I think of late for for the past few decades, really, I think people have been uh, associating social do documentary mm -hmm. with underprivileged or minority groups right. and their condition. So it's about human condition. Right. Um, so, but but f what I do is it's a little bit different for me because what what I actually use it as is a mm -hmm. form of expression, a medium of expression. Okay. And what I document is actually I'm actually documenting uh, a stage in my life. Right. That so so photography is just is just the most expressive tool for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean I've done writing, I've done you know um, films and stuff, but photography is still is still by and large the most expressive so i use it to to photograph what i feel like i need to photograph at that moment right so yeah mm. so how's your approach uh taking photographs or ma making a photograph beautiful let's say for example if you if you see something interesting how what's your point of view my subjects are um humans mm -hmm. so and and most of the time i go into um, communities that mm -hmm. are at the fringes of mainstream society mm -hmm. and because of that uh, I think it's really important for, for, for us to actually try and integrate ourselves with the people we are going to photograph. Right. Um, because we are an invasive presence in their community. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people who take photographs, um, especially the younger generation, they just, um, they, they, they go there and they arrive and they don't bother trying to make the subjects comfortable with them. Okay. And, and, and they just start shooting. And then you right. can see in the photographs that. So that means the, you are trying to say that it's more of a point and shoot rather than a, than, than a picture is taken, uh, how to say, with a, with a storyline behind it, right? That, that's right. Uh, but, mm. but it's also more, it's more about how comfortable they are with you. Okay. Uh, so um, you've worked with some big names, uh, National Geographic? Uh, uh, United Nations. United right. Nations, sorry. And okay, uh, and social documentary, you've done some work for them, right? Yes, I have. Um, okay, maybe, maybe you want to explain a little bit about the project that uh, you have done with uh, National, uh, sorry, the UN. Um, it's basically with their conservation mm. sites in Pahang and Sabah. Uh -huh. um, and this is also joint with Danida, with the Danish agency. Okay. Um, and it's 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 about documenting the communities that rely on the peat swamps in those areas. Okay. Um, so we, we basically go into the peat swamps. Okay. And document the ecosystem of the peat swamp and what it is, and then go and photograph the people that depend on that ecosystem right. to, to to survive. So it's it's actually really hardcore going into swamps, and I've had like peat swamp up to my neck and carrying my gear through, you know. Okay. Like because it rained the night before, right. so it was like a two-week immersion just in the swamp itself, kind of thing. So, was, yeah. Uh, well, is there a special equipment for this, like um, waterproof? No, lenses? actually, like I said, I it was on my head. So. It was on <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what's your last project that you've completed? Is this the the, the last project that you had? No, to no. Complete? The last com project was mm -hmm. uh, the Orang Asli mm -hmm. settlement in Post Simpo. Uh -huh. It's I think two hundred feet above sea level, okay. off Goa Musang. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was two two hours of hardcore four wheel drive going mm -hmm. up jungles, mm -hmm. um, and that was basically to document the conditions there. And we brought with us. Um, two doctors from the Ipoh Hospital because right. they were too far removed from um, civilization, so to speak, mm -hmm. to, to actually get any form of medical aid. So even right. the most fundamental kind of uh, conditions that we take for granted, they are they don't have any help with that. So we brought okay. them up and we documented that. Okay. Um, th there's uh, any other projects in progress? Uh, any upcoming projects that you actually have? Uh, you know, coming up. Uh, maybe you can explain about this picture. Oh, okay. This 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 is actually a long term project. I call it a long term project because mm -hmm. um, it's it's a I revisit it from time to time. So mm -hmm. there is no um, fixed timeline to that. But mm -hmm. it's it's basically documenting the the Muslim Hui's in China. Okay. Um, they they've only recently, I think, in the past several decades, uh, gotten back into Islam. Right. Um, because prior to that, they were suppressed in the uh, Cultural Revolution, and a lot of them had to. Uh, revert back to being non-Muslims mm -hmm. or 
uh, they had to go underground. So it, it, there was kind of like a, a void in, in Islamic um, um, development there. And people, mm -hmm. people who called themselves Muslims were Muslims by faith, but they didn't know what it meant because right. of that suppression. So now they're, re reform uh, they're, they're rediscovering everything, again, relearning, and, and, and it's they're, they're, they're very, very, very strong. Okay, so um, these kind of pictures are pictures that you call from a social documentary, right? Like, yeah. for example, okay, let's talk about this picture. It's a... Uh, this was Banda Aceh, actually. Banda Aceh, yeah. okay. So, so this is after the tsunami, right? Yes, after the tsunami, that's mm -hmm. correct. So it was basically <coughs> to... Do um, to, to document the, the, the Malaysian gr military who was there to help, mm -hmm. to help with the situation. To help the situation and all yeah, that. Yeah. So, um, is social documentary sometimes about expression, you know, facial expression? Uh, maybe you can tell us uh, what, what do you actually look for in a, in a, in a picture, in a shot? Okay, um, this, this links back to my initial mm -hmm. thing about having them be mm -hmm. comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if they're not comfortable and they're angry at you being invasive, then it would mm -hmm. show on their faces. Yeah. I think a lot of people um, don't detect the subtle differences in, in, in a tilt of the head or a raise of an eyebrow or... Uh, well, you know? What do you mean? You mean like, uh, let's say for example, if currently I take a, pic, uh, I take a camera, mm. I shoot you, mm. you won't be happy with me. Is that it or what? I mean, is that... Okay, okay. For, for example, if you're mm -hmm. eating in a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and you're eating away and everything, all the tables are being filled. Okay. And then this guy has no table and he comes and just plonks himself at your table. Right. And he starts eating without a word with you. Well, okay, of course you're going to feel apprehensive. Of course you're going to feel offended and right. you know, like your little... Space, space has been invaded right. and that's how they feel because that's their community you are going in in there mm -hmm. into their daily life mm -hmm. and you are the invasive presence in their daily life so if you don't make the effort to make them feel comfortable with you and to get them okay with what you're doing with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. um, even a smile you know like i've gone to orang asli settlements and i don't understand what they're talking about and they don't understand what i'm talking but it's the body language is the smile is the looking at them eye to eye mm -hmm. you know going down to the level if they're you know if they're squatting down washing whatever you go down and you you interface with them. Okay. So I, I think all that plays a big part in how the pictures turn out. Right. Okay. Uh, so are there any upcoming projects on your site? Uh, do you have a personal project running or you have any other projects with the United Nations? Um, okay. Like I said, photography mm. to me, it's, it's an expressive medium. Correct. So like Picasso never just painted. He Correct. did a lot of other things as well. Correct. So at, um, and, and so now I'm what I'm exploring now, it's more mm -hmm. the philosophical part of photography. Okay. And I'm looking at memory, I'm looking at how memory is an archival system and how synapses triggers certain memories to eat, you know, and things like that. And okay. I'm translating that into a, a body of work that then tries and show how this is put in practice every single day by people. Okay. So as, as you can see... It's like a research, right? Um, it's... Um, if photography is just a picture mm -hmm. with nothing behind it, then mm -hmm. it's just... It's just a plain picture, Correct, right? right. So it, there has to be something that drives it. And I think that's what's missing with a lot of photography today. So, right. Uh, so to, I, to, to be honest, I think that the term, the tag social documentary photographer, mm -hmm. also, it, it's, it's something that I sit uncomfortably with because mm -hmm. my work isn't really social documentary per se. Okay. But of course, if you look at what, I'm, what my upcoming project is, mm -hmm. then technically it's about photographing humans in the natural condition. It still fits, you see, okay, in I the see. loose system, but, okay. but it goes beyond that. Right. So um, uh, we hope to see uh, more of your upcoming projects. Maybe you can uh, share with uh, the viewers where they can actually view your work or what you have done. Is it through research or is it through universities or you know how, how do you get your work out there? Uh, uh, I, I mean, magazines or something, because you, when you work with the UN, you, I'm sure they publish your pictures on right, magazines right. and all that, right? right. Um, yeah. they, have, they have published the pictures that was from the UN project mm -hmm. in, in a few books, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how you can get them, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've also, some of my work find their way into talks by academicians, like the, the, um, the mu Chinese Muslims in China. Mm -hmm. um, there was a professor who did, uh, who was deeply into research in that area, and he, mm -hmm. he used um, several of the photographs in right. a lot of her talks and her presentations. I mean, okay. then on a personal level, the research I've done to drive the, photo the photographs, um, I've also presented them at several um, conferences and stuff, like the recent one okay. was in Finland. Uh -huh. uh, it was a performing arts um, conference. Mm -hmm. So it is technically... But the research and the, the depth you to do go into before actually taking that picture is intensive, right? I mean, from what you just said. But, but that's what gives it the, the depth when you just, when you look at it and you mm -hmm. talk about it. It isn't just about, I mean, and, and that's why uh, photog the great masters, if you'd like, okay, term, okay. Uh, would spend six months or a year or three years in a specific community 
and That's just 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 getting into the groove and start taking photos because then they would know their subject really well and this is what it's all about is getting to know your subjects really well to the wow. point that you can you know you know exactly what's going to happen okay so um do you recommend this kind of job to uh, any aspiring uh, photographers there or like i don't know you may maybe is there someone under you that's learning something from you or something like that i wouldn't i wouldn't encourage mm -hmm. any any uh, aspiring photographers to go into it for money <laughs> so <laughs> okay. it's not it's not a job, it's not a job. no like i said to me it's an express a medium of expression okay uh, much like if i take a paintbrush or anything right um so you if, if, if you look at it as from uh, if you try to commodify it mm. and it becomes a job right then then you're going to end up doing a lot of um, event photography a lot of wedding <laughs> photography you know right. the usual yeah. Yeah. yeah the usual stuff uh, yeah. right thank you very much to be on the show thank you, thank pleasure you very much pleasure um, stay tuned to Banama TV if you've got like, a whole lot of news lined up for you. And thank you for tuning in on this beautiful Wednesday. Stay tuned.